يعني 10 maximum 15 minutes ونخلص Uh, today I'm going to present the uh, journal club for liberal red cell transfusion for cardiac surgery. Uh, this study from the <coughs> Journal of Medicine uh, published on 2017, 12th of November. As, in, uh, as introduction, the avoidance of unnecessary blood transfusion is high priority. Therefore, determining a safe threshold for transfusion is imperative. Among the highest recipient of transfusion, blood transfusion, patients undergoing cardiac surgery, with a restrictive approach to intraoperative and postoperative transfusion in cardiac surgery, safely achieve outcomes similar to those achieved by means of a more liberal approach remain unclear. The infectious and non-infectious risk associated with the uh, transfusion supports restricted transfusion practice in several clinical settings. So patients who are at high, uh, high preoperative risk may be more susceptible to anemia induced tissue hypoxia, potentially exposing them to increased risk of complication and death if restrictive approach is used. Uh, we conduct a multi-center randomized controlled trial to determine whether a restrictive transfusion strategy applied throughout preoperative period would be non-inferior in terms of major morbidities and mortality to the liberal approach among patients undergoing cardiac surgery who had a moderate to high uh, risk of death. The method, the transfusion requirement in cardiac surgery trial was international open label uh, randomized control non-inferiority trial compared the restrictive and uh, liberal uh, red cell transfusion strategy in adult undergoing cardiac surgery with cardiopulmonary bypass who had a moderate to high risk uh, of death according to the Euros, uh, Euroscore. The participants inclusion criteria were 18 years of age and older, scheduled to undergo cardiac surgery with cardiopulmonary bypass, preoperative Euroscore of six and higher, uh, informed consent, exclusion criteria, unable to receive blood or, or uh, blood products, were involved in a preoperative autologous donation program, were undergoing heart transplant and having surgery only for the insertion of uh, ventricular assist device, patient who's uh, uh, pregnant or lactating. The randomization, before surgery, eligible patients were randomly assigned to one of the two groups in one-to-one -one ratio. Patients who were randomly assigned to the restrictive transfusion strategy received red cell transfusion if hemoglobin concentration was less than 7.5 gram per deciliter intraoperatively or postoperatively. Patients who were randomly assigned to the liberal transfusion strategy receive uh, transfusion F, hemoglobin concentration was less than 9.5 gram per deciliter intraoperatively or postoperatively in the ICU, or hemoglobin concentration less than 8.5 gram per deciliter when the patient in the non-ICU regular ward. So the attending physician had to follow the assigned transfusion strategy from induction of anesthesia for the indexed cardiac uh, surgical procedure until either discharge or 28 days uh, after surgery, whichever came first. The hemoglobin level was to be measured at least uh, at the following intervals, preoperatively, before, during, and after cardiovascular bypass, <laughs> and days one, two, three, five, seven, nine, and 11, while the patient was still hospitalized. So if the hemoglobin concentration fell below the appropriate threshold at any time, one unit of RBC was administered at the time and was followed and reassessed the, uh, of the hemoglobin concentration. So the, the transfusion should be started, uh, started within the time frame. So two hours for patients during operation, 18 hours, in the ICU, including step-down units, 40 hours on the non-ICU uh, ward. 
the outcomes of the study, the primary outcome was composite of death from any cause, non-fatal myocardial infarction, stroke, new onset, uh, renal failure with dialysis. Uh, they defined uh, each outcome, but I, I did not put it in the slides. I can send it uh, uh, after. Uh, so occurring during the, these outcomes, occurring during the index hospitalization from the start of surgery until either discharge or 28 days after surgery, whichever come first. The secondary outcome included the length of stay in ICU and uh, in hospital, duration of mechanical ventilation, prolonged the state of low cardiac output, infection, bowel infarction, acute kidney injury, seizure, delirium, and uh, encephalopathy. The, st the statistical analysis, uh, the pre-specified primary analysis of the primary outcome was a peer protocol analysis that include all participants who had undergo randomization and who underwent surgery with cardiopulmonary bypass, except patient who had a protocol adherence less than 90%, patient who were withdrawn from the trial by the treating physician at any time, patient who withdraw consent. We performed um, also modified intention to treat uh, and adjusted analysis for the primary and secondary outcome to examine the consistency of the treatment effect. The modified intention to treat population include all patients who underwent randomization, except patients who did not undergo the planned surgical procedure and patients who did not, uh, who, sorry, with the draw consent preoperatively. So this is, these are the patients. They start with the, uh, enro uh, they enrolled, uh, uh, 45,666 patients, um, almost 31,000. They did not meet the inclusion criteria. So we left with 14,702. Um, uh, 14, uh, they exclude uh, 9,459 um, due to many reason, either refused to participate, unable to provide consent, enrolled to another study, unable to receive blood or blood products, uh, patient not approached, change in surgery schedule, uh, other reason. So uh, 5,243 were randomized into two arms in the liberal and the restrictive group. Uh, in the uh, liberal transfusion strategy, uh, who did not receive the allocated intervention was total of eight, uh, 85 uh, patients. Uh, patient analyzed and modified intention to treat 2,537. Uh, and some patients, uh, they see the intervention or withdraw consent uh, eight, uh, and some of them uh, less than 90% adherence, uh, 99. So the patient analyzed per protocol 2,430. For the restrictive group, did not receive the allocated intervention, 66 uh, patients, and uh, received allocated intervention, 2,555, uh, analyzed and modified intention to treat, this is the total, and analyzed per protocol, 2,430, because here, uh, discontinue intervention, or withdraw consent eight, adherence less than 90, 117. So these are the baseline characteristics for them. And it was similar for both groups. Hemoglobin concentration and uh, intervention, uh, and sorry, transfusion. The mean hemoglobin concentration uh, for the patient at the baseline was 13.1 plus minus, uh, uh, plus minus 1.8 gram per deciliter for both groups. Uh, during surgery, the hemoglobin concentration uh, decreased in each group, as we can see here in this graph. Uh, also, postoperatively, the concentration in two groups uh, separated by approximately one gram per deciliter and uh, remain uh, separated uh, from the ICU admission through day 28. 
So in the uh, restrictive uh, uh, threshold group, 52.3% uh, patients receive uh, red cell transfusion after the randomization and 72.6% uh, uh, of the liberal group received. So with p-value less than, uh, with significant p-value, uh, odd ratio of 0.4 and the confidence interval of 0.73 to 0.47, which is uh, significant. So uh, the clinical outcome, the percentage of patients who had a primary composite outcome event in the restrictive group, we can see it is 11.4% and the liberal threshold 12.5% with odd ratio of 0.9 and confidence interval of 0.76 to 1.07, which is a non-significant non -significant difference. For the modified intention to treat analysis, confirmed the non-inferiority of the restrictive transfusion threshold to the liberal threshold with the 12.3% for the restrictive and the 12.9% for the liberal threshold with odd ratio of uh, 0.95 and confidence interval of 0.81 to 1.12. So there were no significant difference between the treatment group with regard to the individual composite of uh, of the composite outcome in either peer protocol analysis or modified intention to treat uh, analysis. For the mortality for both groups, we can see here, this is the restrictive, which is a 3%, and the liberal threshold, which was 3.6%, with ratio of 0.85 and confidence interval of 0.62 to 1.6, which is not significant. Uh, here we have the... Um, Yes, Dr. Uh, Ahmed. Yes. Uh, can, can you please uh, keep the uh, slide, do not change it. The composite outcome event, the first line, do not change, please. Okay. <laughs> <That's> very <nice. laughs> okay, so the first line, it says composite outcome event. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yes. And then it, it gives you these numbers, the list of numbers here. Mm -hmm. uh, the liberal uh, threshold and the restrictive threshold. And he have here about 276 patients and here he have 300 patients. And yeah. he give you the, the incidence there of 11.4 and this one is 12.5. Yes. Uh, is, this difference, uh, is this difference significant or not significant? It's not significant. On, on what basis do you say that? On basis of the confidence interval, which is crossing the one, which means it's okay. not significant. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, here we have the median length of stay in the ICU and the median hospital stay. Uh, we can see here, according to the confidence interval, it is significant. But if we check the length of stay in ICU median days, it is 2.1 for the restrictive and 1.9 for the liberal threshold. And I don't know if this is clinically not significant and it is only statistically significant. Also, it's the same here for the median hospital stay, which is eight for both. With a confidence interval, it is significant. So I don't know if anybody have comment about this. Yes, I agree with you. It is statistically significant, but clinically it seems not significant. I think, uh, Ahmed, I think there is a uh, meta-analysis. They said there is no significant in hospital stay, but there is significant uh, in the uh, in ICU. Uh, yes, Abdulaziz, this is, uh, this, the, the result of the meta-analysis was actually the same result as in this, uh, in, this, uh, uh, in this article, because the results in the meta-analysis was mainly driven by the results of this study. Uh, one minute. I think yes, uh, the meta-analysis was published currently in 2019, and it said only the the, uh, the significant and uh, sane ICU. The, uh, the the other hand, the hospital say there is not significant between two groups. Yeah. Yes, I will send this uh, meta-analysis later because there is uh, one. Uh, 
interesting results, uh, which is the uh, uh, transfusion-related infections, because uh, it was not statistically significant, but uh, it, uh, the, the, the trend was uh, significant toward the liberal strategy. So they had more, more uh, transfusion infection, which is uh, intuitive in these cases, uh, but it didn't reach the statistical significant uh, value. Okay, thank you. Murtala and Abdulaziz. Um, also here we can see the median duration of mechanical ventilation, which is um, 0.38 uh, for the restrictive and 0.36 for the liberal. Again, it's not significant. Uh, prolonged low output state after surgery. Again, it is uh, uh, not significant between the two groups. Uh, the rate of all other outcomes were similar in the two uh, groups. The subgroup analysis did not show a significant interaction with the treatment except with regard to age. The restrictive uh, transfusion strategy was associated with a lower risk of composite outcome uh, than the liberal strategy among the patients uh, 75 year of age and older. As we can see here, uh, 75, of, uh, uh, 75 year and older, um, it's significant, it's not crossing the one, but not among younger patients. So discussion. In this randomized trial involving patients with an elevated preoperative risk of death who were undergoing cardiac surgery with cardiopulmonary bypass, a restrictive transfusion strategy was non-inferior to the liberal strategy with regard to the composite primary outcome. Clinicians have been adopting a restrictive transfusion strategy in cardiac surgery on basis of the known risk of blood transfusion and of observational studies linking transfusion with increased uh, mortality and major uh, morbidities. However, there has been some discrepancy between the randomized trial and the observational studies on the other hand. The uh, transfusion indication threshold reduction clinical trial in which mortality at 90 days was higher with the restrictive post-operative transfusion threshold than liberal, arousing concerns within uh, uh, the medical community over the adoption of restrictive transfusion strategy. Uh, patients undergoing cardiac surgery have a borderline cardiovascular reserve and exposed to intraoperative hemodilution, which decreased the hemoglobin concentration, thus putting the patient at high risk of anemia-induced tissue hypoxia. The, uh, this trial provides compelling evidence that restrictive transfusion strategy is as effective uh, and safe as the liberal strategy in patient undergoing cardiac surgery, our findings are consistent with those. What kind of evidence again? Uh, Read it again, please. I provide compelling evidence that restrictive transfusion strategy is compelling, as... huh? Yes. Compelling, not compelling. Okay, compelling. Uh, our findings are consistent with those observed in other uh, field of medicine. The restrictive transfusion strategy have been shown to be non-inferior to the liberal strategies in patient in uh, ICU and uh, patient post-hip surgery and patient with GI bleeding. So uh, in conclusion, this trial, this trial showed that a restrictive red cell transfusion strategy was non-inferior to the liberal with regard to death and major disability, including MI, stroke, new onset renal failure with dialysis among patients undergoing cardiac surgery who had a moderate to high risk of death. Uh, also in subgroup analysis, it showed the restrictive transfusion strategy appeared to be safe uh, in uh, elderly patients. That's all and thank you so much. So what was your uh, presentation, Afwan Ahmed? What, what, what is this journal club? speak about the restrictive or liberal transfusion in cardiac surgery patients, comparing both. So why did you choose this particular article to talk about? I mean, you could have chosen, uh, you can give us a, a presentation about this, but you chose one article. 
So what was the purpose of your presentation? Dr. Farid, معلش إذا تسمح لي. بالنسبة للسبجكت إحنا اخترنا أغلبها بداية السنة. يعني كنا مجموعة من السينيورز مع ال Chief President وكذا. واخترنا المواضيع بناء على أراءنا الشخصية بالنسبة لأهميتها. أنا أنا ما بتكلم على الكونتنت يعني as much as I was trying to make him when he when you choose an article for a presentation it should be presented just like in a journal club with a clinical appraisal of of this particular topic. So he should after he presented all the data and come to the conclusion he should go back and tell answer certain questions related to this research. So. Um, what is the basic question in this research? What is the study design? Uh, and, and so on and so forth. At the end, is he convinced or he's not convinced? Will he apply this knowledge today to his patient or not? So uh, I think if you start adopting this kind of um, um, interrogation uh, of uh, different research papers that you present, it will be uh, uh, much more rewarding. Uh, instead of just reading through the article and, and saying this is it, this is what they said, and this is their conclusion, period. Madri, can had the maksud can the presentation or is it not? هو الفكرة دكتور نحن بعد ما after we present the article, we should discuss it and discuss among each other how can we apply the result of this article and to our clinical practice. What is the different opinion? على سبيل المثال كنت ناوي اسالك دكتور يعني based on this article and based on the recently published meta analysis regarding liberal versus restrictive blood transfusion the conclusion now based on the evidence that we have that neither approaches are superior is superior to one another so is it safe to say that we can tailor our strategy based on um, the the uh, the individual status of the patient. Uh, for example, if we have a patient uh, who are uh, if we have a patient who is coming for an, a cabbage with ischemic heart, is it safe to say that this patient might benefit from more transfusion rather than less transfusion? And if we have a patient with uh, say uh, 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 immunocompromised status, uh, is it okay if we say, in this patient, I will elect uh, the, the uh, restrictive strategy, for example? I, uh, for, for me to answer this uh, question, I could say, um, we'll, and this way, we will never change. We will always do whatever we have uh, learned to do before or we, whatever we have seen. But I think the, the beauty of doing a journal club is to pick up something that uh, game changer or something that will answer a fundamental question like this. For me to be able to answer your question based on this particular research, I need to know the strength of this evidence. And, I, and by doing the appraisal, concentrating more on the appraisal rather than on the content, okay? So I would say uh, for Ahmed Yani and maybe future presenters for for uh, uh, journals club like this is to take about uh, maybe ten maximum fifteen minutes um, with uh, with a presentation uh, here and there uh, going to specific points exactly and then stop and say this is their conclusion now he can go and do the appraisal he say okay this is the kind of the study this is the design. This is the bias. This is the, and so on, so on. And I like, again, critically look at all aspects of the research as if he's doing the research himself or criticizing it in a, as a journal uh, reviewer or something like this. And these are well-known set of uh, questions that everybody should adopt, should always use. And the final question should say, is he convinced with this evidence or not? And, uh, and I think all of us will learn today more if he told us this is the, the design, for example, these are the fallacies in this design, these are the numbers, these are the, uh, the, the type of analysis they have used, uh, this is the population, this is the treatment group, this is the, uh, uh, the uh, intention group. I, I, I mean, all these questions that comes up with the discussion.
انا اقدر اقول لك رايي وات اي براكتس بعدين زي ما زي يعني زي ما قلت لك ايش هذا ما وجدنا عليه يابانا وخلاص ولا تاخذ كلام هذا الصنم وتسمع كلامه وتنسى موضوع الارتكل لا احنا وي وود لايك تو ميك ذا بيست اوت اوف ذس ارتكل يعطيك العافيه دكتور فريد اجري ويز يو انا اي سند اولسو تامبلت معين uh, عبد الملك How I can share my screen? I want to share my screen. I want to show something. Okay, but I will stop sharing. I cannot take the photo. But if you allow me, I'll talk about the time, Doctor Farid. So, so for uh, for for next journal clubs, inshallah, we will uh, try to include uh, critical appraisal for uh, any paper that is presented here. أنا ما أدري أنا أشوف إنه لو نتفق على سكور معين مثلاً. ونتبعه في كل جورنال كلوب ونكون ماشي عليه بالتالي يكون هابت هذا عندنا في كل الجورنال كلوب الجاي ان شاء الله. جود ايديا. شايفين ال شايفين السكرين تبعتي ولا لا؟ اي واضحه واضحه. اي واضحه. اي فهي لما تجي تعملها هي نفسها موجوده يعني لما تدخل على اي جوجل موجوده ال اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد. موجوده الاشياء اللي تمشي عليها فانت تبدا مثلا الابستراكت حق الستدي بعدين الريزلت بعدين تجي عندك الريليفنس اوف ذا ستدي وتكتب عنها هي الاسئله نفسها كذا موجوده ممكن تاخذ التامبلت هذا نفسه تبعي اللي قد قدمته قبل كذا مثلا لانه هذه الاسئله نيد تو بي انسر داز ات ادريس ان امبورتنت اوت كم يس از ات بيشنت اورينتد ترايل اور نوت فهذه في الريليفنس حقت الستدي موجوده الاوثر باي اي سكور هذا فيه معليش انت لما تدخل على اي موقع حق الايفيدنس بيس ميديسن انا توي كمان ارسلت لكم حق اوكسفورد يعني في وفي عندنا حق الاي بي ام حق الحرس برضه موجوده في زيت تامبلت موجوده مره نزلتها في الجروب وهي هذه اللي انا مشيت عليها الكلينيكال ترايل لها تامبلت معين وين يو ابريز ات السيستميك ريفيو لها تامبلت معين ال يعني كل واحدة لها تامبلت معين فانت طيب بس انا عندي هيثم عندي اقتراح زي ما تفضل مرتضى تختاروا توبيك على اساس ويجي ون شامبيون حيتكلم عنها يقول له هذه هو وانت تتكلم مع الشامبيون يقول له ذيس تايب اوف ستدي وي نيد تو انسر ذوز كويشنز ارسل له الاسئلة اوكي وبهذه الطريقة خلينا نشوف الاسبوع الجاي كيف حنتعلم منكم شكرا <تصفيق> ما شاء الله عليكم اليوم يعني طولت الساعة خمسة يعني أخذت الوقت كامل ما شاء الله تبارك الله أنا في الحقيقة بتقدم الشكر لهيثم ومرتضى وعبد الملك لأنه في الحقيقة مجهود جبار جدا إنكم قدرتوا تسووا حاجة زي كده شوف اليوم أنا يعني بالمرة مبسوط خاصة إنه مع زملائنا الاستشاريين اللي موجودين ما شاء الله تبارك الله وأتوقع العدد يزيد وإن شاء الله مشاركاتهم تزيد مع الوقت أنا ماني شايف الأسماء عندي بس شكرا يعطيك العافيه دكتور فريد يعطيك العافيه شكرا الله يديكم العافيه شكرا طبعا وزير الصحه شكرا جزيلا يا شباب يعطيك جزاكم الله خير وزير الصحه طبعا حق المستقبل معانا فما في مشكله ابدا مين فيهم؟ انا ترى هذا وانا مشغول بكوفيد 19 وكذا ولا كان اعطيتكم اكثر من وقتي لكن لا قوه الا بالله ما انت واضع دكتور خالد ما انت واضع لله رفعه ترى هذا وانا متواضع الحين ايش فيك انت؟ لا حول ولا قوه الا بالله